Good morning. It is day number three. We are hovering right around eight below zero, and it's going to be a great day. I am super excited to try some brook trout fishing. We're supposed to get some wind today. The weatherman's calling for 17 miles an hour north-northwest. Where I want to go fish might eat a little west, but it shouldn't eat too much north. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. I can get in there because wind chill, I'm not sure. You guys can probably figure that out for me and leave it in the comments, but wind chill at eight below zero with like, let's call it a 17 mile an hour wind. I'm guessing that's pretty cold. Cooking breakfast, got some taters in there now and got the coffee going. Got another question for you guys. This is a question that a lot of people in the frozen north have asked before and I'm gonna find out for myself, I guess. Can you eat frozen eggs? I don't know. I don't even know if I can crack these babies yet, but these suckers are definitely frozen. I'm a little bit jealous. They got to spend the first night on the ice because they were in the gear that I brought out there and it was 20 below at least. I, of course, had my first snowmobile slush mishap of this trip, hopefully the last, and I was not able to spend the night on the ice, but my eggs did, so. I'm pretty sure they're frozen solid at 20 below zero. So we're gonna see if they're edible, see if we can even crack them, see if I can cook them and see how they taste. Frozen eggs. It's important to jam a bunch of good hot breakfast in you that's gonna fuel you for your day. My grandmother who had a huge, huge impact on my life, she was adamant and very serious about driving a good breakfast into you. It was so important to her that you started your day off with a good meal, and you had plenty of energy for the day. You know, lunch was like, yeah, if, if it happened, it happened. Dinner was more like a social thing, you know, something fancy, something good to eat, but more socializing and just kind of routine. But breakfast, if you skip breakfast, or if you were one of those guys who never ate breakfast, man, she would get pretty wound up. It was funny. So, you know, on these really, really cold, nasty days especially, I like to drive a pretty good breakfast into me that's hopefully gonna fuel me for the rest of the day. That is just beautiful. Let's get her, get her warmed up. A friend of mine, Henry, fixed my throttle. I guess the throttle cable was twisted. That's why I was getting such a high idle last trip. Okay, a couple miles up the lake. Uh, this shoreline looks pretty good. It's pretty craggy, nice and rocky, big boulders, a lot of little points. So I'm gonna set up, I guess I'm gonna set up the points and a couple in the coves. We're allowed five lines here in Maine. I'll be throwing in probably four traps, what we call them here, or tip ups, what you guys call them at home. And then probably jig with a fifth line, either for brook trout or out deep for togue. First, we gotta check for depth too. There's a rock like 25 feet from me there, so I didn't wanna to drill too close to it. I do wanna get close to it, but not too close, especially now that I only have one spare auger blade after breaking that other one. I leave the auger in the sled at night, but I bring the battery in. It seems to last longer.
That didn't cut good. It might be iced out. Oh, that's nice. About six foot, not counting the ice. So five foot of water, that's that's pretty sweet. We're gonna set that for Brookie. Well, old Lucky's sitting right on top. Why don't we send Lucky down? That's never a bad idea. State laws this year for brook trout, or lake laws I should say, are one fish only to keep per day, and it has to be 14 inches. If you catch one between 18 and 22, it's gotta go back right away. Anything over 22, you can keep. But you're only allowed one, of course, and that's included in your aggregate. We're just putting a regular, decent sized shiner on. I'd probably call this like a small to medium. Ah, maybe a small. Nah, probably medium. We'll put him on. I had a small hook on this one. Forgot one important part. Get him in the water before he dies. Guys, I like to strip back some line in case it's frozen to other line. So that way it's nice and smooth if the trout's running and he doesn't feel it. I thawed it out a little bit last night, so it's not too bad. All right, we're set. It wasn't my best set, but it is now. Speed and agility ranking on that one was very low. Now, boys. All right, so more like four feet on this one. That should be good. I like it. We'll set these oh, a little bit higher than halfway down, so they're sitting up in the strike zone. Guys, that's pretty big for brook trout fishing. That's a pretty big shiner there. Let me get a hook through them first. I like to go right in front of the dorsal fin. A lot of times they eat them head first. Trout aren't as finicky about head first, but. That's a pretty good size shiner for brook trout, but we're going for pretty big brook trout today. You guys didn't subscribe to this channel just to see little brook trout, right? Nice. All right. Maybe one more that way, and then uh, fill in the gaps. Corby, what are you doing? <laughs> you hungry, bud? I got something for you. Hi, Gorby. Hi. You want some food? You guys want some food? Come here, Gorby. Good, Gorby. Yes. You're hungry. It's cold. I know. There's enough for both you guys. Come on. Gretchen, get over here. You want them little smaller pieces? Huh? I can break them up for you. Oh, here you go, Gretchen. Come on. Gretchen, come on. Come here, Gretchen. Come here, Gretchen. Come on. Come on, Gorby. Come on. Come on, Gorby. Oh, here comes. Here comes. Gorby. Come here, Gorby. Oh, don't be like that. There's enough for both of you. Gorby. Come here, Gretchen. Come here, Gretchen. Here you go, Gretchen. Here you go. Good, Gretchen. That's what we call Gorbies here in Maine. Other places, I think they call them uh, Canadian Jays. They're the sweetest, nicest bird there is. It's been said that it's a long, 
folklore or um, the story behind it is that they're reincarnated old loggers and woodsmen. After they die, they come back as gorbies. So you always have a friend in the woods and I suppose if you get hungry enough and you're lost, you always got something to, to eat because as you could see, it wouldn't be too hard to catch one and eat one. But they're, they're always nice. They're always around camp and they're always around people. Gorby! Gorby! Here it comes. Copy. Oh, you're not going to leave any for Gretchen? Come on, Gretchen. Come on, Gretchen. Copy. Hi, Gorby. Hi. Tell me that isn't fun, guys. That's funny, there were moose tracks right there. A moose just walked through camp. I don't see him anywhere. Fish this cove two weeks ago. How'd you Back do? Same spot. I didn't get a flag over the full moon. I hear you, cause I ain't got one either. Yeah. You know how to get to Moosehead Lake? <laughs> no. <laughs> Everybody said go to Moosehead, you'll catch a big brook. Yeah, I, think I, I must. I, I must I'll, not be on the right lake. I think I might scoot it. No, I'm going further up in the Donut Cove. I caught one back in '86. They have five and a half pounds. Jeez, it ought to be bigger now. Well, no, I kept it. Oh. I found okay. it. I put it on the wall. Nice. Yeah. They were, they that's, were. That's my lifetime achievement. So you think this spot sucks, huh? Well, no. That fishing is just like I've been four or five times and I ain't got a flag yet, so I don't feel <laughs> bad about it. You know, but someday I'm gonna catch and get a flag and I'm probably might be a good one or it might be a perch. Who yeah. knows? Yeah. But that, I'm just killing time. That's all I got. That's all I want to do. Kill time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because it's killing me. Get a flag. Not moving. Something whacked it pretty good. First flag of the day, finally. And just like that, the wind has started blowing pretty hard here but I'm looking up the lake and there's snow tornadoes looks pretty nasty I was thinking about just moving a couple traps but now I'm not so sure <laughs> oh, I moved uh, I moved three traps I'm kind of jumping up the shoreline as I go hitting each point rock pile the stream brooks moving them in a little closer only had the one flag so far all day and that was right here and it looked like it ran at about five feet and dropped it. I was actually sitting on the snowmobile right next to the to the trap when it went up. 
and had my eyes shut. I was almost asleep because that sun was pounding on me. And there's nothing better than that sun shining on you on a cold day ice fishing. Makes you want to take a nap. And that's what I was about to do. This is what we've been waiting for, folks. We got a flag. Let's go see what it is. Please be running. Please do something. Not moving, but it's open. nasty out here. I'm kind of blocked too from the wind, believe it or not. But it is getting nasty and raw. It's blowing probably over 15 right now. Look at the size of that snow nato over there. Damn. I hope that's not coming this way. That is an absolute monster snow nato. We don't get tornadoes up here in Maine very often. We get a couple micro bursts a year, but that looks pretty bad. Almost as bad as the fishes. Almost. <sighs> That's going to do it for day three, guys. Moosehead is kicking my butt in more ways than one. Two flags all day. Oh man, I fish pretty hard too. I moved the traps a bunch of times. I moved the bait up and down a couple times. I, I had uh, traps from about a foot and a half deep down to eight foot deep. I went out and jigged for an hour or so for Lakers and zero fish. Can you believe it? Man, it's, <laughs> this is turning out to be a lot tougher trip than I thought. Not a lot of good video footage for you, but I appreciate you guys staying tuned and watching because something good's going to happen, I promise you that. Um, I've got the traps all in there drying right now by the heater. I shut the heater off today. Might have been a mistake, I don't know. No, I always figure there's no sense running that propane, especially when I'm not there. But all my water refroze, my food refroze. So everything froze up again. It got pretty cold. I guess it was nine below zero according to that thermometer when I checked the history. It dropped to nine below while I was out fishing. My beard got all iced up. And the only good thing was the sun was out. And anytime the sun's shining on you, that's a great day. So we had the sun shining. And then the wind started. And the wind is absolutely brutal out here on this lake. And especially when it's that cold. So I had to tuck in and get out of, a, out of the wind a little bit and it, it seemed to go pretty well. So here's to tomorrow. I don't know, tomorrow's supposed to actually be windier than today, according to the weatherman. So we'll, uh, we'll see, I'll have to make a plan tonight, look at the map and, and see if I can find a spot to fish outside the wind. I'd like to get on a good jigging day for Lakers, but man, it's hard to resist going for these giant native brookies that are up to seven, eight pounds and maybe even the state record swimming around out there slow fishing but hey it's worth it if you can pop one 